Welcome back, everybody. Hello. Welcome back to the Brain Leak Podcast. Today in a beautiful set, vintage, old. This is my house. This what? is the place I rent every time I come to LA. Why did you choose this? I just have a hankering for the 70s. Is she in the frame? Yeah, she is now. Bit. Get a close yeah, up on her, she's, Joss. She's the wide. What's her name? Imelda, I told you. Imelda. You said hi to her when you got here. Now, Justin, don't forget to hold the microphone. Speaking of the microphone. Yeah. Um, this is our friend, Justin. Dare mm. I say our best friend, Justin. We've talked about Justin a few times on podcasts, I think. Yeah. Because you're my boys. Ah, yes. <sighs> Mine's hidden. I can't. You should have worn a t-shirt. Get a, get a close up. Oh, yeah. Here, Justin. Get, get in, in here. here. I was told I can't move. No, 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 no. <laughs> you can for this one. You, you have can move. Permission. Oh, matchy nice. boys. <laughs> We're in a cult together. Wow. When Justin. we all turn 40, which we're going to get there a lot quicker than he does, we have to well, kill the other ones. Were you guys both born the same year, or were you 89? I was 89. I'm 90. You're 90. Mm -hmm. Very close, though. November to February? Yeah. So oh, kindred spirits were percolating in the womb. What's Dude. your sign? Aquarius. What's Thanks, yours? Joss. I'm You're a, a Sagittarius. Mm -mm. Scorpio. Uh-huh. Uh -huh. On the cusp. Scorp Where's hey. Scorpio? I'm not, do I have to do a lot of moving? Yeah, why not? <laughs> we love touching each other. <laughs> <laughs> this is why I put a buffer between you two. Because mm -hmm. the whole time he'd be like, how's Justin doing? What do you have planned Hello? for today? Do you, do you guys play games? No. We talk we don't about current anything. economic climates. We don't have anything planned, ever. The most <sighs> planned thing is being here. I take my <laughs> socks off. No. <laughs> you can no? take your pants off if you no, want. No, well, actually, I can't say you can't take your soft socks off after we did the Toposode. Yeah, but you got to save them. You just licked Sean's foot like 48 hours ago. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's yeah. a good uh, segue. Thank you. Um, Justin, for people who don't know, you might have seen him in the How Did We Get Here documentary. He was Merch Lord mm -hmm. for a while. Did a lot of stuff with other friends before you worked on that tour. But you also were the producer, organizer, creator, founder not founder. I invented Thankmas. Yeah. <laughs> I invented giving. <laughs> Thankmas on stage, the way it went down was because of Justin. So mm -hmm. that's why he's here. Uh, he told us that we needed to bring him on to pay and him back. I got a lot of things that I want to get off my chest. And from recent documentary, you were in my documentary. That's true. I have to do this. And you, you did the whole show. Would you say Probably we're actually friends or you just like the brilliant work that I do? On stage, oh, said, well, brilliant. everything's transactional, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. At the end of the day, you it's all friendship is. Around. Mm -hmm. We made up a podcast just so we could hang out more. Yeah, because we couldn't do it otherwise. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, um, no, we love you very much. We do. I love you guys too. I'd argue that both of you are my best friends. Mm -hmm. <laughs> really? Why does he do that? Because he's. It's impossible for him to be vulnerable. <laughs> <laughs> hey. Right. We talked about the Thank Miss Gargoyle. Time to soften that shell. Oh, the thing. Well, I didn't hear about the Thank Miss Gargoyle because I was side stage and I couldn't <laughs> you hear You just anything. heard. <laughs> <laughs> and then I heard cheering. <laughs> Dude, that's kind of it. So I just put that bombshell out. I think that Fuse is lit, boys. Did you? Is this yours? Yeah. Wait. Bend Ethan, forward. Ethan, what's your greatest fear? Oh. Okay. Would you say? I thought that this is exactly the same sweater that I have, and I was like, no, come on. No. Come on. I think this is going really well so far. <laughs> How do you feel? Good. I had therapy this morning. Mm. I talked talk about, about my people-pleasing tendencies. <laughs> Ooh, I talk about that <laughs> Is that week. why you showed up 45 minutes late? <laughs> yeah, I'm not pleasing anybody anymore. <laughs> He's like, you know what? I need to set a boundary. Everybody shows up late for me. I am enough. Mm. Everybody gets told that at therapy. You are enough. Do I show up late for you? No. But you show up for me, though. Mm. Do so you show up late for him? I show up early for everything. I'm like 10 minutes early because I'd rather be uncomfortably 10 minutes early on my own rather yeah. than make anybody else wait for me. Yes. I hate it. Um, I, I'm the person that goes like three hours before a flight. I'm like 20 minutes before the movie starts. And then you sit through like 30 minutes of ads anyway, so I'm just a fucking idiot wasting my own time. Um, I would like to... Go back to a couple of minutes ago and say that you guys are also my best friends because I didn't say anything. We've gone past that, but yeah. I just wanted to make sure that he did ask you a question that, though. What did I did? It's gone now. 
caught what on is, camera. Oh, what so is my greatest fear is what you asked me. Oh, yeah. so you were listening. <sighs> it's just deflecting. <laughs> what is my greatest fear? Uh, oh, so many to choose from. <laughs> yeah, there's a lot of them. I think, I think, are we talking about, because there's two greatest fears, I think. Like one of them is like, like heights and stuff or yeah. fear of failing. Yeah, because it's like. My one of my biggest fears, I think, would be being on my deathbed and looking back and regretting mm. things, you or being like I didn't sure. do enough, or anything like that. <laughs> you will absolutely do that. Uh, but also um, <laughs> bears. <laughs> I'm really afraid of bears. <laughs> would you be afraid if you saw like a black bear? No, those are the gentler ones. Yeah, you just got to make yourself big. I'm afraid of bears because of the movie. Back country. Cocaine bear. <laughs> and cocaine bear. And also the revenant. Have you seen Grizzly Man? Oh. No. Yeah, that was my that dad. With Grizzly. <laughs> he dies in the end. The he Grizzly does. Man. It's just like audio of him getting mauled by Grizzly yeah. bears. I don't like that I said that that was my dad. You said he dies in the end. <laughs> we all die in the end. But yeah, he got killed by bears. Grizzly. Oh, that guy. Mm -hmm. Isn't Grizzly. that the guy that they talked about that there's like audio of him being killed by a bear and then yeah. it's like... a version going around you don't know if it's real or not yeah because they don't play it in the movie they just show somebody listening to it it's like a family member yeah but there is a version like out on youtube but everyone's like no nah, that can't be the real one it's, it's like him and his girlfriend right do they play the audio in the movie no he just said that in someone's oh. headphones <laughs> <laughs> um that's horrifying mm -hmm. yeah mm -hmm. wasn't it like he stayed longer than he should have like they were going to go back yeah, he and shouldn't have been there Ever <laughs> living with grizzly bears? That's well, crazy. he's called the Grizzly Man. What else is he gonna fucking do? Go is to this, Walmart. This isn't the same guy, I would imagine, that made a suit of armor so he could fight a bear. Is it? Do you guys know about that? Oh yeah. There's footage of that guy Different too, guy. of him like getting hit by cars <laughs> and stuff. <laughs> he's just on the ground, like it works. <laughs> no, I think he died hmm. in a tragic accident. The bear old related. Dude. Hmm? Bear related? If no, it's probably like high impact related. <laughs> if you dedicate your life to building armor to fight bears, you're not going out on your <laughs> fucking sleep. <laughs> you're going out in traffic off a mountain. How do you want to go out? Oh, oh, kicking and screaming, man! Kicking, like, kicking and screaming against huh? bears. I want to. Death terrifies me. I don't like thinking about it. Let's think about it then. Let's for a little think while. about it. No, I, I want. It to be as peaceful and I don't know about it as possible. I'm oh, not, yeah. Like, who's going to sit here and be like, I, I want it to be as painful it. as possible. I want it to be as long and painful as it can possibly be. Yeah, I guess that's true. It's like, how does anybody want to go out when I'm 105? I want to go out like Chris Hemsworth in Red Dawn, which I watched two nights ago. How does he go out? For he the gets shot in the head and has no idea that it's coming after like a really precious moment with his brother. Josh so you want so you, you want to be Peck. shot in the back of the head in front of your brother <laughs> <laughs> by someone from North Korea. Yeah. Damn. Okay. Well, we can make that happen. Yeah. We have a lot of pull on this podcast. <laughs> um, the, the the real brain leak is the what, bullet in the back of your head. <laughs> what, do you actually want to be shot in the head? Yeah, I think so. Why? In like a heroic way, maybe. How you said you went to therapy today, right? <laughs> yeah. And I got to wrap this up. <laughs> <laughs> Things aren't going well. No, but like, if you get shot in the head, chances are you don't know what's coming. That's true. And people are going to be talking about it. It's Unless you're crazy. looking at the person with a gun pointed at you. Yeah, and he's like counting down from 500. <laughs> I'm 500. <laughs> I'm pretty sure the bullet's in your brain before you realize it's left the gun. Mm. <gasps> Depending on the distance. Yeah. It's like lightning. What about what about implosion? Because that happens so fast. You have no idea. Yeah, but then you have to get in a sub and go underwater. Careful. Oh, no, you could you could be you could be somewhere else. They probably have implosion tanks. You want to <laughs> intentionally implode yourself? <laughs> if I don't know what's happening. There's another word for that, and I don't think we should be talking about it. <laughs> what what word? Well, let's talk about it. Uh, begins with an S. Submar Shampoo. <laughs> Shampoo? You talking about the submarine? Yeah. Oh. After it happened. Yeah. Mm. Um, I, I don't want to be aware. I don't know if I want to live really, really long. I don't want to be alive when my body's not 
working responding anymore. you know yeah yeah there's definitely uh diminishing returns when it comes to this meat sack of mine mm-hmm. and that happened six years ago <laughs> let's talk about longevity Let's talk about sun exposure. Like in bed? <laughs> Hydration. Huh? Yep. Cold here, exposure. Here he goes. <laughs> I, can last, I can last like 35 minutes on yeah. a good day. Two if I'm really last horny. In, in what? <laughs> You're talking about longevity. <laughs> so many times I want to eat healthy in my life. So many times I want to work out and I want to, I want to like get things back on track. I don't want to be ordering food all the time. But the thing that always stops me legitimately, is the fact that I have to go to the store and buy stuff. You're telling me I have to go to the store, buy food, come home, cook it, eat it, and then do that all over again constantly? It just never ends. Life is a treadmill of pain. But lucky for us, HelloFresh exists. I've used HelloFresh in the past to help cook some food. Uh, You can go to their website, pick out some meals that you want for the week, they deliver it to your doorstep, but not only do they deliver the stuff for that meal, they give you instructions on how to cook it and they have it all portioned out perfectly already. So all you have to do is follow the steps, throw stuff in, and it makes cooking actually fun. And I learned stuff as I was doing it. I learned how to make like a peppercorn sauce for the first time that I ever did. I had never cooked steak at home before. I used to always think you can only get good steak from going to a restaurant, turns out, the way my parents had cooked steak when I was younger, they were the problem, not the food. So I ended up getting steak through HelloFresh, learned how to cook that that way. Got a perfect medium rare steak the way I like it. You can cook however you want, whatever meals you want. They have so many options for you as well. It's a terrific service. I highly recommend it. I've used it a bunch and it saved me so much time and hassle and stress. And I actually learned how to cook and had fun with it as well. I had music on in the background as I was cooking. It was great. But uh, what I also liked is that you weren't just getting food that they were suggesting. They had so many different options for like calorie counting um, to kind of like lower your caloric intake. They had protein rich food. So if you wanted to up your protein intake, if you're going to the gym, veggie, vegan, all those options are there. You can go get it for yourself. Where do you go, you ask? I'll read it to you right now. Go to hellofresh.com slash brainleakfree and use code brainleakfree for free breakfast for life. One breakfast item per box while subscription is active. That's free breakfast for life at hellofresh.com slash brainleakfree with code brainleakfree. What's the quickest you've ever come in bed? (laughs) I was 18, got two pumps in, done. <laughs> two? Yeah. Wow. I was very drunk. You were drunk and you only got two pumps in? Yeah. When I'm drunk, it's like a... <laughs> <laughs> it's like trying to put spaghetti in your mouth. I'm trying, to, I'm trying to put spaghetti in my butt. <laughs> El Dante. <laughs> El Dante. <laughs> yeah. um, you, what you just said is a very good... Um, Cold Segway exposure into what we were going to talk oh, about. Man, I'm bit. the only one to talk about coming too quick. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I talk about too much about my body on this podcast. You I'm, do way, really, I'm way too open. You do really let are. it all out there. I and I don't think that's a bad thing. I think it's because I'm very confident in my own body these days. Mm. Good. And that's I don't good. really give two fucks about what other people think about me. But that's good. I mean, sometimes you probably should, though, right? Not so, for them. Like a yeah, not for you. everything needs to be said. known. <laughs> <laughs> Had hemorrhoids once. <laughs> your, your your wiki page is just every day. Or I'm every just day. trying to update the fans mm-hmm. of where I am. Progress pics daily. Yeah. Do you have a Pinterest page? God no, I hate. What's Pinterest. the best blog website now? Uh, it's probably, probably still Tumblr. Pinterest. Tumblr. Tumblr, you think? Pinterest I thought it's all pictures. I thought Tumblr died after porn died. On no, there. they brought it back. They brought porn back? Yeah. Good job, Tumblr. There's porn on Tumblr? It's just like Justin Timberlake brought sexy back. They brought porn back. Do people mm-hmm. not like Justin Timberlake anymore? No, Britney Spears fucked him up. What happened? She it's had her terrible. memoir, her like story of her life. Who wrote it? I don't know, but Michelle Justin Williams. Justin Timberlake wrote it. Is Michelle <laughs> Williams the actress? She did the, the audio book for it. And there was a whole bunch of stuff about Justin Timberlake, how back in the day when they were together, well, he forced her to get an abortion first. That was one thing. Mm -hmm. And everyone was like, no, no, JT, stupid. Fuck you. And then there was another part where she was making fun of him for he would meet like people who he thought were cool. And he'd go like, yeah, 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 for shiz, for shiz. 
and he'd start talking like that to people. But in the audiobook version of it, cancel that, this man. They were like, it, it just sounds so funny. And then they were like, Justin Timberlake was going to have a comeback, and Britney Spears' memoir ruined that. Is he a good dancer or is he not a good dancer? I, saw I don't even. Th- good I don't dancer. even know if he can sing. Have you ever listened to a Justin Timberlake song? It's kind of like he's just talking all the time. Yeah, I could listen to a Justin Timberlake song. I think we've sung a Justin Timberlake song <laughs> yeah, but together. Have you ever noticed that there's very little singing in them? He's just kind of like talking. No, for singing. He's Grammy no. He's a good singer. Oh uh, yeah, mirrors. I actually heard mirrors on the radio on the way here. Yeah. I mean, how good is any singer with Can we get modern Justin technology? Timberlake on the phone? Do you guys do yeah. phone-ins here? I mean, we we could. No, we just make fun of Joe Rogan and then tell Jamie to pull it up. Why don't you Can have a Jamie? Do you have a Jocelyn? Yeah. Jocelyn, pull it up. Pull up Justin Timberlake. <laughs> phone Yo, <number>. JT, pull up. <laughs> I want to know about your morning routine. You do? Yes. Because you inspired me for a short period of time to try and uh, better my health and then I stopped. <laughs> well, I wake, up, I, I wake up in your spare room mm-hmm. and I, uh, I work as hard as I can to get out of bed for the day. Mm. And then I come crawling out and I, and I, and I say, Ethan, are you there? <laughs> <laughs> it's me, Justin. <laughs> Ethan, are we going to be okay today? <laughs> Ethan, are you there? I want breakfast. <laughs> Spencer ignores me. Mm-hmm. Spencer ignores everybody. Not Jocelyn. Um, Don't talk, her. Do you want to talk about morning routines? Yeah, I really? do. Yeah. Okay. Because you're all about routines. You're very good at routines. Guys, I just said we made fun of Joe Rogan. Well, now we're, we're not gonna, talking about Joe Rogan. Now we're we're going to become him. Dr. Andrew Huberman. Right. Yeah, who's Stanford on Joe professor. Rogan? I don't know who that is. He is a giant of a man with I a big beard. I don't need to know about any individual other than yourself and your routine and why... Well, certain things may or may not work for you. Okay. Now this is a health and fitness and educational podcast. Yeah. Whoa. You ready to make the transition? I'm going to go on my... I have no problem going on my phone, George. Do you want to <laughs> <laughs> use the bathroom? Now's the time. <laughs> Wake up uh-huh. with the sun. Yes. Get no that blinds. sun exposure. Chug eight, 16 ounces of water. Pink Himalayan sea salt. Hydrate your body. Why? Because it's, it's fucking cool. It's dry. You've been asleep <laughs> for cool. hopefully eight full hours. No, well, I understand the water. What I can't wait for people salt. in the comments to be like, he's one of those guys. Pick it apart. Yeah. By the way, I took one year of community college <laughs> 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 for music business. Um, what's the salt? In electrolytes. There for? Electrolytes. Oh. Salt actually hydrates you. Just don't take it before you go to bed after a big night of drinking. It'll destroy you. Question. Yeah. Why not just have like a Gatorade or something? Doesn't oh, yeah. have I a mean, bunch of electrolytes. You can Gatorade in the fridge because we're all influencers. Well, I don't have right, Jocelyn. <laughs> <laughs> no, you have Prime in your fridge, which is notorious for having a lack of salt. Uh, so it doesn't it's, have salt. It doesn't have the electrolyte you need, apparently. Mm. Well, you need potassium and sodium and some, magnesium. N- n- no, it's magnesium. But salt is the one that you lose most during workouts because mm. mm. of the tears mm-hmm. and the blood and the sweat. So water, you go outside, you look at the sun for 10 minutes. Drink water, stare at the sun, scream at the sun if you can. <laughs> stare at the sun. <laughs> Get your perennium wide open. sunbathing. Sweat a little oh, bit. Oh, yeah. Do you do that? The, do you do the... <laughs> do you do Naturally the, bleach your asshole? Yeah. Yeah. It's all blonde down there. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. It's like that. Yeah. Um, <laughs> and then you want to do like a three-minute cold plunge in water between like 37 and 50 degrees Fahrenheit. We don't use that here. You're Water, Canadian. Cold plunge or the... I'm European. We're allowed to say Celsius. Yeah, oh. you can override me. This is huge. I don't actually know what it is in Celsius. Oh, Three? my Man. God. You've Three been... to eight degrees Celsius. You've been ruined. Three to eight degrees Celsius. Oh, okay. God. I ate... Oh, there's... <laughs> there's shame on my belly. <laughs> Cheese on my shirt. <laughs> <laughs> We're talking about health and fitness. I had a cheeseburger and four leftover... <laughs> Hush puppies on the way here. <laughs> <laughs> this is why you shouldn't listen to anything we say on this podcast. <laughs> Do you think that 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 negates negates your and morning shitting all over it? <laughs> Do you think that, that negates your morning routine? You wake up and you drink 16 ounces of water, you stand in the sun, you do the cold plunge, and then you, <laughs> you eat do a, whatever you want. A cold McDonald's <laughs> burger. <laughs> Just rifle through Ethan's fridge to try to find something that's not expired. Just eating condiments. <laughs> 
There's, there's AG1 from like December 2021 in your fridge. Um, well, send me, send me some, send me some. Liquid What's, IV though. I drink that. That's true. Too much sugar. Like, <laughs> <laughs> what? There's a zero sugar version. Is there? Yeah. Oh, sign me up. What do they use instead? The stuff that gives you cancer? <laughs> it's all going to give you cancer. At the end of the day, body's a temple. <laughs> <laughs> What's the deal with the cold plunge? <laughs> it looks cool. Like, why? What um, does it do? Truthfully, I like the benefits that I notice the most are like are the ones that positively affect your mental health because you're mm. putting your body in like extreme stress and you're forcing yourself to just breathe. Don't have time to it. fucking think about anything. Hmm. Yeah, I mean, you get to a certain point where you do think. I'm going to die, <laughs> and your whole life flashes before you. Well, that's eyes. what I mean. Your body's not like, what if something bad happens today? It's like something bad's happening right now. I need to deal with this. I mean, it, it completely changes your like your state because you're waking up, you're groggy, you're tired. Mm. If you jump in a pool of cold water, you go into fight or flight, and you get this dopamine kick that's supposed to be the equivalent to doing like a line of cocaine, but it lasts for six hours instead of fifteen minutes. Why hmm. does it last for six hours? Because I don't fucking know. Because nature's beautiful. <laughs> we're, we're 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 good to swear on this podcast, right? Yeah. Fuck I yeah. Don't, I don't know, man. I have no idea. <laughs> <laughs> you said you were allowed to swear, and then you didn't even swear. <laughs> well, I already sweared. I don't know. I was asking for forgiveness more than anything. Oh, uh, it's fine. Um, okay. I did do the cold plunge. I th- I think twice. I think. Yeah. I, I, listen, I don't want to encourage anyone to cold plunge because someone's probably gonna have a heart attack at some point. Yeah. and die and I don't want to be on the hook for that yeah and I think like asthmatics have issues with it and your breathing gets fucked let's go figure that out we should can we cut in a cold plunge right here we're going to the cold plunge we did say we would do a cold plunge video at mm-hmm. your cold plunge mm-hmm. super we did but I don't go. want everyone to see my tiny pee pee <laughs> it gets so small yeah it's the body's wonderful thing <laughs> What uh, if you? Could What's the say smallest perc- your dick's ever been? <laughs> <laughs> if you could say a percentage loss, huh? What what would that look like? It looks like a clown nose, <laughs> <laughs> a and clown. the balls are nowhere to be found. No, they're, yeah, all they're, they're deep like up inside. Up yeah. What if you're uncut? What does that look like? Mm, I couldn't even um, imagine. Like the top of a balloon. <laughs> <laughs> like, a, like the top of a tied up balloon. Yeah, that's mm. fair. You guys have both seen my penis. Yep. Yep. Mm-hmm. I've seen. I've seen yours. Who was I talking to about this? Your therapist. Oh, man, <laughs> I don't remember. Maybe <laughs> I don't remember who I was talking to about this. I've seen your penis. You've seen my penis. You've seen my penis. I've not seen your. I've penis. not seen Sean's penis. Nope. Now's the time. <laughs> I live, I live too far let's away. Let's get some sun exposure. <laughs> he lives too far away. It's you're not going to be able to see it. <laughs> <laughs> it's too quick. Distance is a thing. Damn. Well, I think Sean's I, got a hog and he's afraid to scare everybody. <laughs> he's afraid to scare everybody. <laughs> I'm afraid of what the world might think. They'll look at me like Willem Dafoe. They'll just look at me different. You think it's true? His penis being big? Yeah. Willem Dafoe? Yeah. Yeah. You think well, I mean, I think there's pictures microphone? on the internet. Yeah, there's of photos penis. of it. <laughs> kind of. <laughs> it's, you guys want anything? <laughs> Kevin Hart has a really good bit about his, like seeing his dad walking around naked. Jesus. Well, Willem Dafoe's penis would be very normal in the cold plunge. <laughs> very normal. The cold plunge is kind of fun, though. During, it's awful. But once you get out, you're like, ooh, I feel nice. It's almost like the thing he said, that it's yeah. a dopamine rush for six hours. Six hours? Sounds too Give much. Or take. Depends on what's in the water. Then you start doing some cocaine right after. <laughs> how, uh, how often should you do it if uh, you did it every day? So studies were based on 12 minutes per week. Hmm. So that's four times a week. You do three minutes. You do six times a week at two minutes. <laughs> 12 times a week at one minute. You could do 24. Three times a week at four minutes. <laughs> let's not get into math here, let's. Or you could do one time 12 minutes. Bust yeah, it out. That, you don't even need to do it once. So you yeah. said viewership's going down. <laughs> <laughs> well, we're hoping the doll brings it back a bit. What's her you name know? again? Imelda. And the sommelier from 
Bourbon. Sierra. Mm -hmm. And what's your name? <laughs> hey there, Bookaroo, Buster Brown. Are you out there skedaddling all your money away? You're out there, oh, I'm gonna sign up for this. I'm gonna sign up for that. Oh, maybe this one as well. Photo app that for some reason I have to sign up for and pay for to get filters? Not anymore. Stop signing up for stuff that you're just going to forget about and lose all your money to. But if you want to keep track of it all, you know where I'm going with this. We've done it before. It's Rocket Money. Rocket Money is a personal finance app that helps you cancel your unwanted subscriptions. It monitors your spending and helps you lower your bills all in one place. Look, I've done it too. It's called a spade a spade. I'm guilty of it as well. The amount of subscriptions that I've signed up for that I just wait for the card to run out and then renew that and don't renew the subscription, it's a bad practice. I'm losing a lot of money that I shouldn't be and Rocket Money is actually helping curb that and make me find all these subscriptions that I didn't realize I, I had open and then canceling a bunch of them. It's great. Rocket Money has over 5 million users, and counting, because you're going to sign up as well, has helped save its customers an average of $720 a year and $1 billion in total savings so far. Overall, not just for you. You're not going to get a billion dollars from this. So stop wasting money on things you don't use. Cancel your unwanted subscriptions. Manage money the easy way. Speak properly by going to rocketmoney.com slash brainleak. That's rocketmoney.com slash brainleak. Go. Save money. Justin, we were we were talking in the last episode. We had our, our little uh, holiday leak miss episode and we were talking about New Year's resolutions. Oh. Mm. Do you have any do you have any you're a very goal oriented man. Do you have any goals for this next year? He tries to be because his life's a mess. It's a fucking disaster. <laughs> <Damn>. <laughs> I'm barreling into the New Year's <laughs> a high speed train with no fucking brakes. Hit the ground running. <laughs> All you can hit the ground real hard. Sprinting. Yeah. I don't know if I'm sprinting away from something or towards. Well, that's a up wall. to you. <laughs> it's up to you to decide, isn't it? Yeah. No, I'm. I'm. I'm pumped. I don't think that you need to wait until January first to make set goals and change your life. That's fair. That is good point. Uh, but I choose to. Yeah. It makes me like quirky. everybody else. I have, I have something to talk about. <laughs> I have a collection of um, like before photos that that I would always take in like in December after Christmas. You're like extra fat. All before. <laughs> it's just five years worth of me getting fatter and fucking fatter. <laughs> no after. <pics. laughs> no after. There was that three Technically, months. Technically, the the next December is the after pick from the yeah. previous one. <laughs> you put it in reverse order and. Good to go. You'll see the light come back in someone's eyes. <laughs> like you know how there's like a hidden folder of photos on your phone where you yeah. people put like shit that they don't want people to see, like uh, nudes. Like nudes. Yeah. Mine's just a bunch of pictures of me looking fat. <laughs> <laughs> Some of them are in your bathroom. <laughs> Some of them are in my bathroom. Yeah, yeah. Oh, like the pictures we're taking there. Yeah, I have a camera uh. in there. Man. What did you think he meant was in your bathroom? I thought he meant some of these photos, like you printed them out. <laughs> he put them on the mirror so you could look at it every day. Inspiration. Motivation Monday. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Who's your motivation? Who do you want to be like? Me. Nice. I want to be like me. How's that working out? <laughs> so far, <laughs> a bit slippery. Cheese shirt. <laughs> <laughs> cheese shirt. Jesus Christ. I don't even know if it's cheese. I don't even know what it is. <laughs> could be anything. Anything. I'm surprised you are so into like bettering yourself and like learning and doing all that kind of stuff, but you haven't tapped into philosophy all that much. Because for me, that was like the big game changer for me. And I was like that stoic guy going around being like, guys, you got to do this. The problem is Ooh. I've got a terrible memory. I used to listen to a, like a, like a two minute stoic podcast every morning mm. and I'd be like, that is words to live by. Yeah. I used to listen to <laughs> an hour at 1130. <laughs> Stressed out and yelling. When I was listening to my audiobook about it, I had to take notes. <laughs> and yeah. then I would reference those and like highlight bits. What are some words that you live by? Um, there's a lot of stuff outside of your control, and external influences shouldn't impact your emotions as much as they do. Wow. And that you can only control what you're doing and hope that you're going down the right path. Well, both of you are very beholden to other people. Yeah. And that's why I started listening to the audiobook to try and not be bold <laughs> to other people anymore. What do you do that you know your fans don't like, but you do it anyway? Uh, not upload. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 
I um, I think I had a big issue with the parasocial aspect of my community. And I think I was listening way too much to what other people were saying about me and like putting my life in brackets that they were like making up for me. And then I stopped doing that and a large portion of my audience kind of like fell off because they're not getting that attention mm. anymore. There, there's not that like open communication as much anymore. Yeah. But now the people that I'm left with are like, cool, chill. Quality over quantity. Yeah. Uh, I think I started being meaner to my audience, oh. um, which I think was good for me because everyone for such a long time babied me constantly. And was like, oh, you don't know anybody. You're the baby of the group. And mm. then I just started <laughs> being a bit more of an asshole to my audience and calling them out more. And you also got super hot. Stop and, like, and just, ripped. And <laughs> well, that was last year. That yeah. was last year. I told him that people were taking pictures of him for Thankmas, talking about how big and sexy his arms were. And yeah, I agree. That shirt was a, Thanks, was a choice. <clears throat> I feel uncomfortable talking about my body. Cute voice. Um, yeah, people baby me. I don't know why. <laughs> Hello, mister. <laughs> What's going on? What would Ethan like to talk about on the What's podcast today? I can't talk about mister. I like this shirt, mister. Thank you. I like these yeah. pants. Screams what alpha energy. Um, <laughs> what? What kind of material would a guy be looking for if he wanted to get pants <laughs> like those? No one knows. I don't actually know what these are. It's not about mm. being a baby. You're allowed to be a baby. Yeah. That's another thing. You're allowed to be a child and you're allowed to be an adult at the same time. You don't. Ha- I converted into one. And then I was like, I don't need to do that. I like my childlike sensibilities. Mm-hmm. Mm. But I can be very serious when I need to be. Yeah. yeah. I think people are afraid to be... Or have childlike tendencies or like immature tendencies because they're afraid people won't take them seriously. I think yeah. that's what it is. I think that's what I got frustrated with is no one ever took me seriously. Did they or did you not take yourself seriously? So you uh-huh. beat a grown man up <laughs> in front of hundreds of thousands Shirtless. of people. <laughs> in front That'll of do child. it. To be fair, there was a definite switch in people's opinions after that fight. There was a very big shift. Yeah. If you're a little emasculated bitch boy and you want to be taken more seriously, <laughs> sign up for Creator Clash. <laughs> just a, Which a, Justin also does. Mm-hmm. I do that. Justin organized Creator Clash last year. Positive comments only, please. Thank you. <laughs> no, Creator Clash is, is a special event. It is. There's a it's lot of special. noise around it and negativity, but at its core, I mean, you can speak to it a little bit. Like the yeah. journey from not boxing at all to then going... What is it? Five two-minute rounds mm-hmm. for some people. Mm-hmm. That takes a tremendous amount of training and hard work. I mean, if, I think as far as the actual event goes, I don't think that there's another event like Creator Clash that has the the pull that it has. And like this last year, you know, there was people that weren't happy or whatever, but it still turned out to be an amazing event that had a sold out arena and everyone there had such a good attitude and that there was so much energy. Yeah, if only uh, the people who were there promoted it more. Calling everyone out because I'm not a part of this event, so. Huh. Yeah, I promoted it. No, you promoted the shit out of it. You're always good about that stuff. You even promote my coffee and my fucking thank miss and everything, so. I mean, I think that goes along with being afraid of your fan base a little bit or being afraid of how you'll be perceived. Mm-hmm. I think promoting something before it happens. Yeah. You're taking a risk. Yeah, there, I, that stigma is still there, like over promoting to your audience and yeah. not wanting to like. Well, yes, but also it. not knowing what you're promoting because it hasn't happened yet, right? Mm-hmm. The number of people who created content after Creator Clash, after it was like a, actually a cool event, yeah, um, and it looked good, and there was you know hundreds of creators there, you know there were hundreds of videos. I mm-hmm. guess there's the fear as well that you don't want to show off your training in case your opponent sees it and. I mean, yeah, but you could still promote it without showing your training. At the end of the day, it's for charity. It's a charity. It's then, yeah. for fun. And that's the other thing, too, is even if you were showing off your training, the skill level that everybody is at is not great enough that you would be able to do anything with that information anyway. Yeah. You know? I would like to say, you said there's a lot of talk and noise around it, but I also think that that stuff... As an outside perspective, because I wasn't involved in the event as heavily as you two were, like, I don't see that stuff as much. I also don't really go on Twitter and stuff as much anymore, so I don't really see anything like that. Yeah. So it's I mean, like when you go and you're just part of it, I think that's what people need to remember is like when you're there, it's nothing but positivity. Yeah. 
Yeah, it does come with a lot of nonsense. It's not the majority. It's just loud voices and it cuts through and people like conflict and drama. That's yeah. what they latch on to. What you just do is ignore it and keep your head down. If there's a legitimacy to it, then you listen and you adapt and you evolve and you change. Mm-hmm. And then you say, okay, we won't do that again. Mm-hmm. But a lot of it is just like people being pissed off for no reason. Well, there was reasons, but... Yeah, whatever. That I don't well, fucking care. That's why I'm not... Dude, I mean... Kudos to Ian and Anissa for powering through all of that. Mm. Yeah. And I should say that they are two of the most like empathetic, like kind people. And all they wanted to do was make this event work and mm-hmm. be a success and do something special. Yeah. And the amount of the amount of shit that they had to deal with on a personal level. Yeah. Well, that's what we were saying. I, the only I people that never. get canceled are the people who are empathetic. Like a Jenna Marbles. Like she didn't yeah. really get canceled, but people were like trying to bring up shit. And then she was like, I just want people to be happy and I just can't handle people being upset by anything I do, so I'm just going to leave. And then mm-hmm. as soon as that happened, everyone like backtracked and was like, wait, no! Yeah. <laughs> Don't that, leave! And that's, it's like, well, yeah. too late. She didn't really get cancelled and she didn't cancel herself, but I think it's the people with like a big heart that mm-hmm. are affected most by that kind of stuff. Yeah. Um, yep. With a heart. What do you guys think about cancel culture? Oh, baby. I think it's a necessary. (laughs) That's a lot of nonsense. I just realized... uh, Sorry. Never mind. No, no. Your cable matches your chair, and it's nice. Oh, that was my cable. (laughs) Careful, boys. You Uh, never know what'll happen. Rattlesnakes. Have you ever wanted to meal prep before? Like, you want to work out, or you want to eat healthy, and you want to meal prep, but you're like, oh, man, I'm not going to go through all the effort of going out and buying groceries, cooking all the food, portioning it all out, and then somehow managing to save money at the same time while doing it. It's expensive. Well, lucky for you, there's a company called Factor Meals that are helping you do all of this. They have beautiful meals, breakfast, lunch, dinner, chef prepared food that not only tastes good, but the portions are done for you. It's really easy to heat up and cook. And better yet, it keeps you on track. We all have busy lifestyles. I have TikToks to be watching, not cooking food. So you can treat yourself to high quality, delicious meals over the holidays. Choose some 35 plus chef crafted meals every week. To support a healthy lifestyle and meet your meal preferences, whether it's calorie smart, vegan, veggie, or protein plus, they do it all, baby. Factor, it's what's for dinner. But not only for dinner, uh, lunch and breakfast as well. It also says that Factor offset 100% of their delivery emissions. So you're not just going to be buying a whole bunch of food and then be like, oh no, the ozone layer fixed itself and I'm breaking it again. Not with this. So... Head to factormeals.com slash brainleak50 and use code brainleak50 as well to get 50% off. So, I threw a lot at you there. Factormeals.com slash brainleak50 and use the code brainleak50 as well. It is twofold. Go get it. Get yourself some grub. How much time do you spend trying to please other people? Mm -hmm. If you could do like a, a percentage in your day. Is that including making videos? Well, do you make those videos for yourself or for other people? Depends on the video. Mostly for others. <laughs> I'd say 70%. Maybe for other That's people. high. Maybe That's ex- more. Very high. Yeah. yeah I'd say 70, 70%. How often do you do things that you don't want to do just because you're afraid to say no to people? Mostly. If you could spend a week doing only what is, you wanted to do. Uh, is this podcast just because you're afraid to say no to me? <laughs> no, I like doing the podcast. <laughs> like, do you want to make a podcast? Yeah. Yes. No, I like I like doing the podcast. There's a lot of things that I do that I like doing, but there's also a lot of... I constantly double book myself knowing... Like, someone will ask me to do something. I know that I have a thing going on at that time. I will still say yes because I don't want to say no to them. And then I will later... Disappoint both people. Yeah, remember when we went out dune boogieing in Palm Springs? Mm-hmm. And then Ethan drove us all there. And then <laughs> I drove he like- was like, shit, I have an appointment back. <laughs> so I'll drive two hours back. Yeah, and then you like guys a, go dune like boogie. Three and then, hour drive. And then three hours back. You spent like nine hours of your day driving <laughs> to do like a 20 minute thing. <laughs> yeah. I didn't. You didn't I do didn't it. You do didn't it. do the thing. I drove everyone. Remember, I drove everyone there and I went. 
guys, I have to go. And then I left. And then I came back to the house. But you didn't moment. you didn't do the thing that you left for? Oh no, I did the thing that I left for, oh. but I didn't get to do the doing. What were you movies. doing? Uh I can't remember. It was like a recording thing. Yeah. I bet you would have remembered Dune Buggying. I would have. I remember Dune Buggying. That was fucking tight. That was the most fun I've ever had. We should go do that again. Yeah. <laughs> we should go do that for the first time for me. <laughs> <laughs> I think we should have a travel show. Where travel? We just do all the fun Ooh, like you and McGregor's like biking across America kind of thing. Is yeah, whenever Ethan decides to get a motorcycle, we should, we should do that. Yeah. Is that the one with the otters? You and McGregor? That clip with him? Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. How old is Ewan McGregor? Didn't he like adopt someone or something because of that show? He like Dude. met a kid and then like fell in love with them and heard their story and then was like, I'm gonna adopt you and then did. Whoa. Yeah. Daughters? He, he adopted No daughters. daughter. Oh, okay. Uh Ewan McGregor is like Who cares? 50s? fifties? Fifty something? Something like that? We could go How s- old is Ewan McGregor? <laughs> 50. Jamie, pull it up. <laughs> Siri, pull it up. We could go do buggy right now. Who's stopping I, us? I don't want to. Let's talk about all the things that we want to do. <laughs> That's what this podcast is. And then release the podcast in six to eight months when we've done After all we've of done all of them. Mm. Okay. Hmm. We'll go skydiving. We'll go. And we'll call the journey till death do us part. He- First one to die loses. Mm-hmm. Wins. Depends on your perspective. <laughs> <laughs> Who is that funny to you? Yeah, yeah, I think it's funny. Really funny. Yeah. Didn't you hear us laughing? I did. Um, Everyone at home is laughing as well. She's like, I wish I had life. <laughs> <laughs> What's your name, Matilda? No, Imelda. Imelda. Yeah. I will kill you. Did you Actually, name her she Imelda? Huh? Hmm? Did it come with a name tag? She did. She no. come with a... I just made up the name. Why Imelda? She looks like an Imelda. Sounds like Melba toast. You know, Melba toast. That's what I was going to give at our dinner last night. It was a little toast. You didn't give a toast. No, because I, I did it at Thank Miss. And then we did like a little toast with champagne afterwards. And I was like, thank you to everyone who was here. Most of the people at the dinner last night weren't at Thank Miss. <laughs> That's so that true. That is true. I think it's crazy. <laughs> Listen, you raised $6 million. We raised. Like three days ago. Mm-hmm. And I feel like you've already just moved on from it. Yeah, I'm dead inside. Isn't that how it works, though? You know? I mean, what am I supposed to do? Go around with a fucking badge that says, I raised six million? Fuck you. (laughs) I mean, you got a plaque, but... It's spelled wrong. It's spelled wrong, yeah. No one will know that you raised that I just I I think because you do it for the right reasons and not because you're trying to, like, build yourself up out of it that I'm not... I don't wear that as, like, a badge of, like, yeah, I'm better. But I'm cool because I did that. I understand what you're saying, Justin, where it's like, why don't you like sit in it for a little bit and enjoy the victory? But like, how do you do that? It's, I did that all Sunday, well, the day after. I feel like you, but you like, you, you can't, like everyone's moved on to the next thing already. Yeah. Yeah. That's just the modern world, baby. I did talk about that in a video that I think I'm uploading today. That I was like, like Avengers Endgame and stuff come out and it's like biggest thing in the planet. Mm. It was everywhere. And now it's like, who even fucking cares anymore? Dude, I watch that movie once a month. Avengers Endgame? Yeah. Really? Yeah. Have you watched it in the movie room? No. How often do you watch Infinity War? Once a month. Good. That's a that's Do you actually watch them both once a month? Yeah, I love Marvel movies. Hmm. You're the problem. Are they a sponsor? No. God, I wish. That would be sick. We'd have to record a podcast episode for like a year. (laughs) Yeah. Um I think Infinity War is way better than Endgame. I haven't seen Infinity War since seeing Endgame. I thought you were going to say I haven't seen Infinity War, no, 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 and I, I was going to start twisting it. nipples. I like the, I just like the, the action and the witty characters. I think it's just fun. <laughs> <laughs> you know, don't think too much about it. That's why they are. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Here. and now all the new ones fucking suck. What new? Oh yeah, With all the, of them. Well, like which ones? I haven't watched the newest. Fucking Black Widow. Uh, Ant Man. Black Widow. Didn't see that. With uh, Charlize. I just went and Scarlett saw Johansson. The, yeah. the Marvels. The Marvels? The Marvels. Captain Marvel. Fucking movies I suck. Saw, I just saw The Marvels. It was fine. Why would you go to the cinema to watch that? I don't know. Why would you do that to yourself? I'm over here saying Godzilla Minus One is out. And it's the <gasps> best Godzilla movie f- ever made. And yet you're watching The Marvels. Well, 
You hadn't seen The Lighthouse until you came to my house. And you go to the cinema <laughs> the to watch The Marvels. The... Well, no, no, no. I went to The Marvels because my friend invited me to go see a movie. And I was like, I'm not doing anything. Sure. Why not? Sure. I'm just going to lambaste you for a while. <laughs> <laughs> I do want to see Godzilla minus one. Why is he minus one? I think they're trying to get, because it takes place during like World War Two, So they're oh. like trying to go back to the beginning. What about World of, War One? Because it's not an allegory for that. Godzilla is an allegory for the Hiroshima bomb. Can you define allegory for me? Please. Uh, Metaphor, kind of. <laughs> what is the actual definition for allegory? It's like know. one of those words. It's like, I know what it means. <laughs> but I couldn't tell you what it Kinda means. But like no, you it's like irony. It's like, huh? It's like lambaste. Anyway, everyone go see Godzilla minus one. Best Godzilla in years. Shin Godzilla is great, but the human element is kind of like, eh. Better than uh, sound design wise than any of the others. How's the sound? Twenty fourteen Godzilla is goaded for sound design. It is pretty sweet. Um, but you it's, bored, Justin? What's going on? I'm having a great time. I'm you so can be part of the conversation, but you choose not to be. So now you're just being. Hmm, I'm trying to think of another cool word. An allegory. <laughs> You're being so <laughs> allegorical right now. now. You're just being an allegory. It's that vice president guy. Joe Biden. Allegory. <laughs> <laughs> that was stupid. You know. Oh. Allegory. There's a <laughs> My God. Sometimes I, I'm so upset, by the way, that last night at dinner, mm. we had ribs on the table and oh, somebody was leaving. Mm -hmm. And... They were like, I got to go home and take care of my baby. And I said, oh, you could bring some of those. <laughs> you could bring your baby back ribs. <laughs> you I did. Yeah. And I no that. one laughed. No, I went across the table. I went like that. And I turned to you and I was like, good one, huh? And you went, yeah, it was great. <laughs> and I told it to Evelyn afterwards. And I was like, no one laughed at my joke. And she was like, I would have laughed so hard if I heard that. And I was like, you were sitting next to me. You need to project more. <laughs> you could bring your baby back ribs. <laughs> I like that's funny. Oh, and I was so happy. I thought of it in like a split second and no one laughed. <laughs> so I was sad for the rest of the dinner. Well, it sounds like the dinner was over. Is that over. why we didn't go out after? Yeah. We all went to bed. We were all thrilled to be going to bed. Yeah. I don't pride myself on much, but my ability to make a joke really quickly mm -hmm. is like the only thing I'll give myself credit for. So when it doesn't go well, not I'm only that, miserable. Not only that, you're, you are very, very quick, but you also have great callback. Your memory is... Mm -hmm. I've never seen anything like it. <laughs> Thank you. I can't remember <laughs> anything. <laughs> but for comedy? You'll remember bits. Your memory? I've never <laughs> seen anything like it. Why is that funny? You can't see memory. It's just an you? absurd thing to say. <laughs> don't be, hey, Ethan, you have a good memory too. No, I don't. I have a horrible memory. Well, you don't. You have, here's the thing. You both have good memories for strange little details about yeah. me. Like what? Explain uh, when I've had a good memory. Sean tells me stories about me all the time that I've never. I was telling you a story about a lovely night we had out, and you were like, "I don't." You were like, remember. "I love Montreal. We went to got we got poutine for breakfast with your brother." Yeah, we went to a speakeasy bar. We talked about I talked about my relationship with my family, and so did you, and we bonded. Oh well, if, and well, I was like, if conversations about family were involved. Those are going to be suppressed. Mm. Yep. What do I remember? Let's you, move the topic over to him, to yeah. Ethan. Yeah, Ethan, jeez. Uh, what, what can I say? What, where, where, where to begin with Ethan? <laughs> Sounds like a stand-up special <laughs> or a roast. When is the roast of Jack Jacksepticeye happening and you're going to sit in a big old coffee mug? I did say I wanted to do that next year. I had to get Thankmas out of the way first. Mm. I don't like that idea. I don't Why? like the idea of people saying bad things about you. It's I not, love it. It's not bad. It's it's also jovial. you're gonna roast Jokey. everyone so much harder than they roast you. You're gonna hurt people's no, feelings. No, because my yeah, my roast like I don't know like the surface level to go to to be like ha ha, you don't upload or something <laughs> like that. Like those are like such non insults. <laughs> but to me, I'd be like, so afraid you're gonna die alone, huh? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Hmm. See? <laughs> <laughs> Jocelyn's loving this episode. She's having a great time. Jocelyn thinks that Justin is very funny. Jocelyn is... No one's meaner to me than Jocelyn. No she, one's meaner than Jocelyn, Jocelyn to me also. <laughs> like Jocelyn is just mean. I'd like to think I'm pretty mean to you guys. Come on. Hey. Oh, yeah. She's Sean, meaner than I am? You're really mean to me. I am. 
It's I'm not mean to you on purpose. I say the jokes to you that uh, y- the types of jokes that you say outwardly. That's how you won my heart. Yeah, by making fun of your dad, <laughs> mocking me and my father. <laughs> Jocelyn's very blunt. You got some Dutch honesty in you. Mm-hmm. Some people are blunt by force, but she is just blunt force trauma. Blunt force trauma. <laughs> See what I mean? Yeah. The pride is beaming in me. You ever have a joke in your head that you come up with immediately and you're like, I can't fucking wait for this to leave my mouth. <laughs> yeah. And then you say it and, you're, and everyone laughs and you're like, oh my fucking God, this is the greatest thing that's ever happened to me. <laughs> when you laugh really hard at your own joke. Yeah. It's great. Or like you're hanging out with Aaron or something and Aaron has the most like validating laugh. I love Aaron's laugh so Can we get a laugh much. track for, of Aaron right here? <laughs> Thank you. Isn't it great? You guys it's have an awesome. editor, huh? This isn't just going to be one long shit conversation, <laughs> is it? <laughs> Can I answer stand to four minutes? Yeah. Uh, Aaron's laugh is amazing. It it does make me really happy when I can make Aaron laugh really hard. It's awesome. It's talk cool. about talk about um, like childish wonder still encapsulated in a man. Yeah. Mm. He tries very hard to keep his childlike wonder childlike alive. Wonder. He's got Thank so you. much whimsy. <laughs> He really does. He has, One might even say he's got some uh, pep in his step. Some yeah. beans. Very <laughs> allegory. <laughs> very, <laughs> very vice president very of him. allegory. Oh. Where did the childlike wonder end for you? Ugh. <laughs> Was it after your parents' divorce? <laughs> no. When did that happen? My how parents' divorce? Yeah, how old were you? It's like 14 or 15. Ooh, tough year. Tender, <laughs> tender age. Yeah. So what age were you? I was 15. Mm-hmm. Damn, it's fucking troublesome teens. Yeah, really driving the parents apart. Mm-hmm. Did you think it was your fault? Uh, no, I knew it was my brother's fault. <laughs> 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 Why? I knew it was my brother's. Because my dad said it's his fault. <laughs> he said, "This is your fault, buddy. I don't know what to tell you. I'd love to. Hey, I'm not much of a liar unless it's towards your mother. <laughs> <laughs> For many years, and in front of God." Mm-hmm. Is that when the whimsy stopped? Whimsy? No, I've been whimsical for, I mean, I lost it, I call it five years ago. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I don't like that. It's coming back, though. It full, is. Full force. I like it. When There's a back. spark in your eye again. I like it. There's a twinkle. That's what I said. I think, you know, it <laughs> comes along. I think that you need to remember <laughs> when people are, like, working harder and taking on more responsibility, like, when you just, like, have a life to manage, it can. it's very easy to forget that, it, you're like supposed to be having fun too. And yeah, just constantly stressing about maintaining a career and money and all your shit. That's what a lot of people do. Inflation's a bitch. Nobody can afford anything. You got to work your ass off, mm-hmm. and then you can't afford to have fun. <laughs> and then you you hit the weekend, and it's like, I'm gonna have to save that money. I'm not allowed to have just fun. Gonna relax from the week because it was so hard. Recharge. Get ready for the week. That's but hey, let me ask you this: Can you afford not to have fun? No. <laughs> you think that Michael picked that up? It's what? the burger wrestling the fucking <laughs> the out now. of you. Wrestling. It's fucking tangled around your aorta. <sighs> I cannot afford to not have fun. If I can't have fun, it's all over. I was thinking about this while I was showering this morning. Ooh. What, please tell me you're thinking about me. <laughs> what do you do to have fun? What, what do you actually do that makes you genuinely happy and like beaming? Mm. Uh... Like, do you know what I mean? The not to be because, like, podcast. you paint little things, oh. which is cute. My answer but was I not going like to be that. More so, like a necessity than having that fun. That is that's more meditative. Yeah, as cliche as it sounds, it's literally having like a Sunday off with Evelyn, and like taking the whole day to just hang out. That's nice. Hey, if you don't want the fucking answer, don't ask it's the question. Cute. It's that's cute. I like it. I like that a lot. I yeah. think that you and Evelyn have a very, very cute, beautiful relationship. We do, mm-hmm. and I'm very happy with it. Good. It's all going to end someday, though. Yeah, because we have to die. Until death do us part. I think if you say that in your uh, <laughs> in your vows, that if someone wants to get divorced, you should be allowed to kill them. Till death do us part. It's like you said you would stick with me until death, so if you want to leave, I guess I have to shoot you. Oh. Whoa. That's God's rules. I never even thought about that. Yeah. And then they go straight to hell. That's crazy. Yep. Yeah. Right? <laughs> <laughs> I think it's in the vow somewhere. That's yeah. like the fine print. Yeah. He's like, till death do us part. And then you'll go to hell. He just whispers it under his breath, under his vestments. <laughs> What's hell to you? Both of this. You. <laughs> 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 um, 
It just ima- it feels like we've been doing this since 1973. Hell to me is being stuck in a Zoom call. God. That never makes any and progress. Everyone's trying to fucking leave, but the, there's always one more thing. So we had we had it on a thankmas call recently where it was like we got all the stuff needed. It was like, do we need Sean for anything else? Like, no, we need to talk about something else that doesn't need Sean. And then they started talking, and then you were just like, see ya. <laughs> I was just like, <laughs> I'm out. <laughs> I can't. I fucking I don't know how you do it. Most of your job is Zoom calls. And it makes me die a little death every time. I started liking Zoom calls more when I got a um a nice webcam. And uh <laughs> you should look at yourself like a I just parrot. look at myself. <laughs> and a shiny and mirror. I, I make myself laugh. And if work gets done, that's just a bonus. <laughs> I do good work. I do yeah, good work. You do. You do, you ex- do excellent work. As proven by Thankmas. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> Unless you thought it was bad, then no one cares. Clash, I thought Thankmas show, was great. My show. Thankmas was as close to flawless as it could have been. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I think that we could have actually gotten away with not mentioning that the stream was down for like th- however long it was down for and just gaslit the people who thought they were watching it. Yeah. Just like men in... We should have come out men in black to everybody oh. in the audience. Just come out with your phone and just turn the flashlight on and off. Damn. And be like, you're going to forget everything. Oh, it would have been so much funnier. Before we left, we could have yeah. inglorious bastards them. Killed them? Mm. You said it, not me. <laughs> <laughs> Three beers? What did they do in inglorious bastards? They uh, burned yeah. down the theater with everybody inside. Oh... oh. Well, it's good we didn't do that. Yeah, I'm happy about that. It was an option that we could have done. I mean, it's always an option. You could go burn a theater down right now if you wanted to. It's actually, it's on a wheel. We Every time Really Good Touring does a show, we spin the wheel, and there's always one little million-dollar slot, and it says, burn the theater down. <laughs> Haven't hit it yet, but... <laughs> We'll, we'll know when it happens. Hey, New Year's just around the corner. <laughs> <laughs> new Year, new me. New wheel. Same wheel. What's on the rest of the wheel? Uh, just do a great show. Try Have harder. Break a leg. Mm. That's. This sounds like the worst wheel. This sounds like an excuse to burn a theater down. <laughs> like the rest of it is just your job. <laughs> yeah. It's just what you're supposed to be doing. I don't know what I'm supposed to be doing. And people keep giving me things to like like huge responsibilities man am i glad to ask i asked you to be on thankmas <laughs> <laughs> i don't know what i'm doing i don't know what's going on but then you did the whole thing no, i know i'm kidding i talked to my therapist about this this morning yeah ever heard of imposter syndrome mm. <laughs> not you guys i've played among us <laughs> <laughs> let's not talk about video games thanks jocelyn <laughs> jocelyn liked that one can we get jocelyn mic'd up Never mind. She for who? <laughs> for who, Jocelyn? You know what? You've ruined it. You've ruined it, Jocelyn. You've ruined it. It's all over. You don't like being on camera anyway. This is like the person who's like, I didn't want to go, but I wanted to be invited. Uh, Jocelyn I at least wanted to, to know that you guys wanted me there, but I didn't want to go. God, I hate it when people do that. That makes me so fucking mad. You shouldn't be around those people. I know. I shouldn't. Who's the person you hate the most right now? The person I hate the most right now. I don't hate a lot of people. Mm, you know? Too nice. Um, I was thinking of, like, I really don't think that Donald Trump should be in charge of pretty much anything. Mm-hmm. But mm-hmm. I think that we should sort of create like a Truman Show type situation for him. So <laughs> just watch can, him, so we can watch him <laughs> act like a maniac. Watch him pull off his skin. He just thinks he like thinks he's that he's running the whole world. He's like, yeah, it's a, it's a dicta- yeah, you, you, like you, a you got him, Don. baby in a playpen. <laughs> he thinks it's a complete dictatorship over the entire continental United States. I can just see him walking around like a little baby in there as well. <laughs> I'm going to do it. I'm going to hit the button. <laughs> He's just actually inside the Las Vegas sphere. Yeah. <laughs> and they just have like a <laughs> thing around him. Oh, that would be so good. Don't I you like miss that. him just a little bit? No. Just a no. little bit? You no. Know, seeing him around? I don't even want to joke about that. <laughs> it's not a joke. He's a joke, but he's so fucking like he's a he's such a character of a nope. human being. Nope. I'm gonna roll with this one. <laughs> <laughs> We've I never do had like your Truman Show idea. I think. I think. I don't think he should be put in charge of laundry. I don't think he should be put in charge of anything. Yeah, that's what I said. <laughs> it's an allegory. It's an allegory. <laughs> <laughs> 
I'm convinced neither of you actually know what an allegory is. I, I know. I'm telling you that I don't know what it is, and it sounds like you don't either. You said it's kind of like a metaphor. No, he said I that. Said that. Which is kind of true, right? Listen, a little bit. It's closer age. to a metaphor than it's not. If we can look up the age of <laughs> yeah, Ewan McGregor. You <laughs> McGregor. We can look up what an allegory is. Yuri Gagarin. Am I Jamie, text on this? What is the definition of allegory? Oh, my God. Uh, a story, poem, or picture that can be interpreted to reveal a hidden meaning, typically a moral or political one. Can you read that again? No. I wasn't listening. Uh, Siri closed it. That's not symbolism, Jocelyn. That's when symbols happen. <laughs> <laughs> when you have a, like the bat signal. Can you start roasting a little bit? I like it when you're a little bit angry. Yeah, give me a frustrated little, and little fed roast. Up. I, I do like doing that. That's a very fun energy to be in. Yeah. I, I think I like doing it because people know I'm not serious about it. Yeah. At least I hope so. I'm never sure. Because my love my love language is making fun of people. <clears throat> That's not an But I'm like, as soon as you like get upset about it, please tell me because I don't want to actually is upset that a anybody. Love yeah. Aren't they like acts of service and gifts? There's and words of affirmation, which is pretty close to that. <laughs> It's, it's my way of showing that I like you down. If I'm not I'm, sure what affirmations means. If either, I'm poking fun, it means that I like you. Mm-hmm. You fucking slut. <laughs> <laughs> it's a great way to get away with saying really mean things to people that you don't like. Yeah. It's a great way of testing Ooh. the room. Yeah. I do it a lot by making fun of people a little bit to be like, okay, people are down to clown. And I can tell a person's sense of humor by how they react to it. It's my litmus ever, test. Ever made anybody It's pretty uh, reckless. For yeah, it's very reckless. I've met a couple of people who do not like it. <laughs> mm. But I don't want to be friends with them anyway. Did you make anyone cry, though? Ever? No, I wish. Mm. I think I just have Irish humor, where it's like making fun of each other all the time. And people don't get that, and they should. And if they don't, and they make fun of me for it, it's insensitive. And it's called projecting your suppressed trauma that your family refuses to talk about. Yeah. With one another. That's what I said, Irish humor. Yeah. <laughs> just defining it for all the non-Irish. Oh, I see. You're t- saying the allegory for it. <sighs> I don't know. So is allegory like a like definition? No, no, no. It's a metaphor. For it. <laughs> it's like a, oh, it's, it's like a metaphor. It's like a metaphorical It's a symbol. representation of something in a different form. Like, um. Pretty much nailed that. Like a, like a, like a mother's. Love is like a winter coat mm-hmm. that keeps you warm. What's a simile? <laughs> a simile. A simile. Are you talking about synonyms. What's a simile, though. I thought a simile was when two things are the same. No, that's similar. <laughs> <laughs> He's got you there. You're not it's wrong. like symmetry. I always come back. <sighs> William Afton, you don't know that yet. <laughs> Come on. You touching each other's toes? Oh. What's this like? <laughs> it can't be that. Hello. <laughs> Here we go. There it is. Foot we're, getting, phone. we're getting silly now. <laughs> oh, we've gotten past the serious segment. In hey, Ethan, Justin. It's for you. <laughs> it's Pick for it you. <laughs> it said, say something funny. Hello. Yeah, this is Justin. Oh, I'm Justin. on your podcast, and I don't know how to act. <laughs> <laughs> Justin, you never answered my question about your New Year's resolutions, unless you did, and I forgot. New Year's Again, resolution with my memory. <clears throat> no, he just said that you don't need to have a New Year. Do you guys ever have? <laughs> yeah, yeah, I, sh- I shut down your stupid fucking question. <laughs> <laughs> Do you guys have serious conversations on this podcast? Do you mostly yeah. just talk about shitting your pants and? I mean, you've listened to the that. podcast. Yeah, I stopped. Like lots of other people. <laughs> As Ethan would say, this is true. This is, this true. is true. You got uh, me on here. You must be digging at the bottom of the barrel. <laughs> it's crazy. What a, what a psychotic move. No, I just did charity over the weekend. I thought I'd do a little more. Yeah, it feels oh. good to give, huh? It feels good to give back to the community. Doing nobody any That favors. has taken so much from me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. uh, New Year's resolution. Hey, things? listen. It should, I mean, it should be kind of, I don't know. It's kind of the same every year. It's like, be better. <laughs> yeah, the before picture is always <laughs> cut some weight. You know, that's your New Year's resolution is to keep the pictures going. God, I have such a good one from earlier this year. I think I showed. Did I show it to you? It's me, like <laughs> with my mustache. 
and my gut's just fucking hanging out. I'm just doing this one, holding the camera or like this one, like this, just going. <laughs> just fed up. Just fed up with the gross. How many years? Five. Since before I moved here, <laughs> which was like five years ago. Yeah, we can get to ten. Man, I want all of these framed. Yeah, as soon as I get a, a good after photo. Might be a while. <laughs> you need to take enough of them that you can put them on like a Rolodex and you just start spinning <laughs> oh, them. So and sweet. it's like, yeah, I took a picture of myself every year. <laughs> uh. um, yeah, we could do that. We mm -hmm. could do that. Good. In my room. <laughs> okay. Good. I'm glad. <clears throat> Still didn't answer the so resolution New Year's question. resolution. Yeah. Um, honest answer is like rediscovering who I am. Mm. Mm. I think that it's easy to lose track of that when you're focused on doing things for other people all the time. Yeah. Most people in their day-to-day -day lives, they work for other people and it can be all consuming. So rediscovering who you are. I like that a lot. <clears throat> yeah, that's good. Uh, what if you don't like what you find? Um, well, then I'll just focus on other people again <laughs> and just get through this. <laughs> they got me 30 odd years into my life. You can kind of be whoever you want to be, though. That's yeah. the beauty of it. Yeah, fake it till you become it. Fake it long enough that. Don't fake it till you make it, because then that means you'll go back. Fake it till you become it. Someone said something good about it's not fake it till you make it, but like <laughs> do it till you shoot it or something. Or fucking. <laughs> just sounds like. Ride it till you it. find. Ride it till you. That just sounds like the same thing, but they wanted to be funny about it. Yeah. Write it till you die it. <laughs> Write it till you die it. <laughs> That's what I say about the sausage. Write it till I die it. It doesn't make sense. It does because I'm eating so much sausage, I'm gaining weight, and then I have to die it. I'm unappreciated in my time. I need to go back out on tour to the audience that will laugh at my jokes. Because they're paying to. <laughs> <laughs> they're paying to laugh. At you. I always worry about that, that when you're on stage in front of people like that, that they're just laughing at anything. Because they paid for it and they think that... Oh, because they're, they're just there for a good time and they like you already. Mm -hmm. So I'm like, that's fine, but also hold me to a higher standard sometimes. Well, that's just you not giving yourself enough credit for what you're saying on stage and doing. Probably. I don't remember anything that I say on stage. I'm in the moment... You're talking about your show or like either? <laughs> <laughs> I can't remember any of it. Your show is like... Clawhan. Clawhan. God, <laughs> God bless you. you. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. I don't remember like... Oh, I got notes on me. Number eight. Your boy. Oh, yeah. Your boy. Mm -hmm. I got JP over here. Mm -hmm. You, you don't have anything as well, for my you? tour, do you? No. I don't have a tattoo for Ethan's tour. We do have matching tattoos, though. Hmm. Kind of funny how that works. Yeah. No, I definitely like Sean a little bit better than I like you. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. I don't want to... I'll just sit over here on the side. Even of the jokingly, couch. I don't want to hurt Ethan. No, I couldn't. Actually, jokingly, I've hurt Ethan a lot. You oh, almost so exclusively pain. jokingly hurt Ethan. There's a lot of pain. What I don't like is that he doesn't... thank bitch for eight hours straight. <laughs> <laughs> I liked Thank Bitch. Thank Bitch was a good bit. I think a lot of people liked Thank Bitch. Yeah. I liked <clears throat> Thank Bitch. Like I said, I say the humor that I think Ethan would react to. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I liked Thank Bitch. Yeah. yeah. Would you say it if it hurt your feelings, though? Me? Would I call myself Thank Bitch? Is that what you're asking? No. Like if Sean would you call said, me out on it? I just don't think that you would. Oh, no. 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 I don't like that. Okay. I don't like the idea that I could have annoyed you and you don't say anything about it. Oh. <laughs> Why don't we talk about a few times where he's crossed the line with you? Yeah. Hmm. Safe space. Hmm. I can't think of anything. You haven't. Mm, I think Try. he's lying. Is there anything that you guys want to get off your chest right now? Ooh, a mediator. Ooh. Hmm. No. Hmm. Sean's not going to start this. I think we're pretty good. No, I think we're good. There was a, a moment earlier in the the cast where you had been like showing up late mm -hmm. or like postponing episodes or something. And I was like worried your heart wasn't in it. Yeah. And I just said that to him and we moved on. Yep. I think that's the only thing that's happened. Mm -hmm. But you also had a lot going on during that time. That was like mid documentary. It was made something else. Yeah. 
Yeah, but I mean, everyone's got a lot going on. Everyone's got a lot going. Yeah, on. but you were you were like really overwhelmed at that point. Yeah, I think it's still fair to be like, well, you're not showing up on time. Or I know. Not, or I'm just saying that I'm not blaming you for it, as in like you actually didn't care. Hmm. I was I was aware that you had a lot going on. But thanks. No. Oh, here we go. The vote. Oh. Isn't this I wish you would just look at me in the eye and go, thank you. Me? Thank you. <laughs> Close enough. Close enough. What are you thanking him for, though? He just said something no, you did critical something and then you. walked you right out of it with his own words. <laughs> I just gaslit you back into <laughs> sitting over there. <laughs> uh, no, I'm, I'm glad that we could talk openly about that yeah. at that time. I think it's important. I'm standing up for myself more this year. You are? Mm. That's my thing. When's the last time you stood up for yourself? Like two weeks ago on a thankless call. Nice. Oh, yeah. Nice. It's pretty cool. Feels good. I should. going to get that. drunk on power. <laughs> <laughs> Sean, you went, fuck you! <laughs> so no lunch then. <laughs> Nothing to eat. Nothing to eat? Okay. That's fine. You'll learn. You're 27. <laughs> I'm 34 soon. I think it's hard to stand up for yourself because... My whole thing, my therapist is always like, you don't want to come off as a dick. And yeah. I think that's a thing that I struggle with a lot, where it's like, I don't want to come off as like ungrateful or like an asshole or whatever. Yeah, but you could just say your piece and then go, but no worries if not. That's how I <laughs> respond to every text ever. No worries if not. Mm -hmm. I almost put that in because you made me text Jeff to get a ticket for the Game Awards last night. Oh, yeah. And I, I almost put in no worries if not as a joke. <laughs> <laughs> I would have put that with Ethan. You got to learn how to read or hear his yeses, because mm. you'll always say yes. If I ask you for something or to it's, do something, you'll always say yes. It's a but body language thing. If he doesn't want to do it, he'll go. If he says yeah, or if he says yes, <laughs> <laughs> it's like, I just start convulsing. So no, no. <laughs> yeah, you've gotten pretty good at reading my yeses, but you're correct. I will just say yes. Hmm. This is good. I like this. I don't think that we should. I don't think that you say yes to everything, but I think that you're a very generous person and you'd want to help people. You want to help everyone. Yeah. I don't think it's a, at fear of disappointing people. I think you are reaching your limit, though. Yeah. I think that a lot of it is a fear of disappointing people, though. I don't like disappointing people. But you also like helping people. Mm -hmm. I like helping people. Yeah. I think that's overriding your your desire to not disappoint people. Mm -hmm. How do I disappoint people more? Say no. Hmm. Say no. You gotta, you gotta condense your, your circles. Have you mm. agreed to do something in the next week or two that you don't want to do that's coming up? This is probably part of the problem too where you can't remember. <laughs> I can't <laughs> literally just like can't remember. <laughs> yeah. um, I don't think so, but I probably will. <laughs> probably will. I want you to call somebody and cancel a plan. Oh, man. That would suck. I want you to make an appointment somewhere just so you have an excuse <laughs> to call so. and exposure therapy. My therapist did that with me um, a couple of years ago. This was like right before COVID. She was like, for until I see you next, we see each other every week. She was like, you can't do anything for anybody. Mm. Uh, and she was like, if anybody asks you for <laughs> anything, you have to say no. And it hey, was Ethan, my like, paycheck's late. Sorry. <laughs> Sorry, can't do it. I'm no man this week. <laughs> but even uh, she was like, if you're going to the grocery store and your roommate asks you to get something, you, you say no. And I, It was awful. It was terrible. Did you do it? Yep. It sucked. Hmm. There was a few times where I let it slip. And I said yes. But. Relapsed. He yeah. also can't ask for anything. He offered me $500 to help him pack up his house and move. So I'll do I don't it. like that this so segment has turned into us attacking Ethan <laughs> for the way he is. It's no, clearly it's making good. him uncomfortable. Wait, no, 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 no. That's not... It is. It's not attacking. I want you to feel bad. Attack I me. I don't think it's, that... This is not an it's attack. Not making I do me this feel a lot bad. with Ethan because I, th I think that he gives too much of himself to other people. And I mean, it, it feeds into like rediscovering who you are and doing yeah. what makes you happy. I yeah, think that's why I sympathize with it a lot because at 27, I was the exact same way. I was on tour almost when I was doing nonstop things for other people. Mm -hmm. You learn. You yep. get sick of it after a while. 
What well, it's were... it's like you say no a few times and you cancel a few things, and it's like, oh, people didn't get mad at me, and I didn't disappoint anybody. Yeah. What you were saying before of like, what do you do for fun, mm. uh, and not just like a thing that like, can't, like, what do you do actually for fun? I have no idea. I don't do anything for fun. I think the one thing that you do for fun, you're not allowed to talk about for some reason. Yeah, <laughs> which I don't know why. I feel that way. Don't let him pressure like, you into talking a, about it if you don't want to talk about it's it. It's a fear of judgment, I feel. Can we talk about it? Yeah, why not? <laughs> no. <laughs> no. That was it was a oh, test. Was that a test? <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> oh. Jocelyn did this with me the other day. Because And clearly you're not learning. <laughs> because somebody in my life wanted to have a conversation with me that I didn't want to have. And you were like you kept coming up to me going, Ethan, can we talk? And I would go, yeah, what's up? And you'd go, no, you're supposed to say no. But the, it was hard with you, though, because I thought that you actually had something that you wanted to talk about. Maybe. Yeah, you can't do it with the people you're closest to. It's tough. It's tough out yeah. here. But I think you're a great person. Thanks. I think you guys are all great people. I think you're overwhelming yourself a lot, and it's hard to see sometimes. Mm-hmm. And I see a lot of myself in you. Huh. But I'd like to see a little more of myself in you. <laughs> Um, <laughs> that means so I, a lot. I think that's why I give a lot of advice, but you don't always have to take it. Mm-hmm. <laughs> the fuck, just touch my ear. It was says uh, Esmeralda. Esmeralda. Renesme. No, that's not what it was. Yeah, remember what was her name? What did Ren- I say it was? Mel- no, Emelda. you're not allowed to say it. Emilda. I thought it was Esmeralda. Emelda. What do you do for fun? What do I do for fun? Yeah, just cut all that part out and cut to this fucking bullshit that he's about to say. <laughs> Fuck, dude. I watch Marvel movies. I like to play pickleball. I like golfing. I like Ooh, watching my Miami Dolphins lose constantly. No, oh, they're okay. good. You don't even know what football is. You think it's a, a round Yeah, but ball. I know people make fun of you for wearing the hat. No one makes fun of me for wearing... Do they? Are people talking about the hat? <laughs> I remember when you met like another Dolphins fan once and you were like, there are dozens of us. <laughs> I found the Dolphins bar. Mm-hmm. It's called The Snug. The Snug. The it's snug. in Burbank. It holds about 40 people. It's Which got is the entire floors. fucking community of Dolphins <laughs> it's fans. Never full. <laughs> <laughs> are the well, Dolphins good? I actually don't know. They're very good. They're very good. Yeah. They're Miami? Like, Miami, yeah, the Miami Dolphins football team. They, I should have worn my jersey today. God, they could use the promotion, I think. Um, <laughs> Are not, they going all the way? Super Bowl? Some people think so. I mean, I also think so. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm not confident. But listen, they've been letting me down for my Aren't entire life. Aren't they the top life. of the... The leaderboard? The, the NFC? No. AMC? NFL. <laughs> the the AFC. AFC. What does that stand for? Uh, the American Football Club. Why did they have two different things? Why I know less just, about football than I let on. Why don't they just go east side, west side? Yeah, Justin. It doesn't have the, 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 right, the same ring to it, I don't Come think. Come on. East side football. No, make up an opinion. Yeah, well, they it's don't. podcast. You can say whatever you want. They you actually used to. It could be the WFC and the EFC. Yeah, no, they used to, but then it was it became... Um, yeah, but the WFC is the wildlife championship where they make oh, animals wrestle. That'd be sick. Well, actually, it would be a little sad. Gangs, that's why. Mm. Back in the '90s, when that makes sense, hip hop culture was really coming up, and there was the East Coast versus West Coast rivalry. The NFL was forced to to change the name. Oh, interesting. That makes sense, actually. Yeah, it does. Look it up. Did you just make that up? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Did you actually just make that up? Yeah. <laughs> no, I didn't make that up. How could I make that up? Um, yeah, th- and so they're the top of the former EFC, and no, yeah, EFC, which is the East Coast <laughs> football. <laughs> who's who's the best football team? The Miami Dolphins. The Miami Dolphins. No, I. Well, so who's, like the generic like in England, people will always be like, "Oh, Man United is the best. Liverpool is the best." Like, oh. I mean, it changes. It used to be the. Fucking Patriot. I don't know, dude. I don't know. The Patriots when it was like Tom Brady and Bill mm. Belichick. Mm. Uh, now, That's what I now was it's thinking. It's like of. Kansas City probably because of Taylor Swift and Travis, Travis Kelsey. Kelsey. But I, they are actually a very good. Yeah, uh, yeah. Here's Ethan's I big have theory. A rumor. Not a rumor. Not a rumor. Yeah, yeah. What's it called? <laughs> Conspiracy, Conspiracy theory. 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 That she's trying to get them into the Super Bowl. She's going to perform. No, she's not going to perform. But I think that the games are going more in the Chiefs' favor because. 
They know that if the Chiefs get into the Super Bowl, whether or not they win, if the Chiefs get into the Super Bowl, it's going to have a record-breaking amount of viewers because of the relationship between Travis Kelsey. And I don't Swift. think Swifties are going to go to a football game. It's been it's been crazy on the internet, though. I think that the viewership would go up. Oh, viewership, viewership for sure. Viewership. Regardless, viewership. regardless the Super Bowl is going to sell out for that one chance to see Taylor in the booth going. Yeah! Yeah, doing a secret handshake with Travis Kelsey's mother, being like, she's just like us. <laughs> <laughs> I No, that's what I mean, though. Viewership across the board, I think, uh, would be... That or love is actually years. real, and he's just playing better because he's in a committed relationship. Here's and the whole team are inspired by him. Hmm. Here's what I'm afraid of. Love? Uh, oh, yeah. Um, that the Miami Dolphins beat the Kansas City Chiefs in the AFC Championship... Ooh. And then everyone starts to hate the Miami Dolphins even more. Um, That's a scary thought. That is scary. That <laughs> it's not that scary. Well, I, I mean, just culturally, how significant a community can like rally against something and completely destroy it. Yeah, and especially because we're having so much fun out there. Why do you like Miami Dolphins so much? You're Canadian. Well, we didn't have a, a team in the NFL. We had the Canadian Football League, which was mostly teams named the Rough Riders. <laughs> But, um, but why Miami? Ace Ventura, Pet Detective. Finkel, Finkel is Einhorn. Yeah. Wow. Can't watch that movie anymore. Yeah, you can. No. What's wrong with it? <laughs> <laughs> that episode just ends. <laughs> <laughs> Should we wrap this one up? I think we can. Have we started? We talked about football. Do you talk about this little amount of things all the <laughs> time? Yeah. I don't. We, I, I feel like we didn't talk about anything. We, yeah. Yes, we did. We talked about. Let's recap. Yeah, we our did. Feelings. You guys cornered me for a bit. <laughs> I want you to know that that always comes from a good place. Until yeah. it doesn't. Watch it. I mean, no, cornered I rat will go for the throat. I know. I know it comes. And he is cool. from the year of the rat in the I Chinese am. calendar. We learned that I'm from the year of the rat. I'm the horse. What are you? Probably a fucking pig or something. <laughs> Well, Justin, it's been, it's been it. wonderful having you on the podcast. I don't know, even know why I said that. <laughs> I saw all of the joy drain out of your face. Probably a fuck. Like, here we go. What's it going to be? <laughs> Nineteen eighty-nine, Justin. What year is it? Pull it up, Joss. Ooh, snake. Ooh, I'm a snake in the grass. I'm gonna fucking uh, bite your ankles. Wow. We need to watch over him. I know. Fucking rat in the corner, <laughs> snake in the grass. Hey, Horse just trying to eat. <laughs> shit. Horse just staring at his cock, being like, "Fuck yeah." <laughs> Hey, we, start, we started talking about Sean's hog. Let's wrap it up talking about Sean's massive hog. Oh, Jack septic cock. <laughs> Year of the hog. Love that. <laughs> Year of the hog. <laughs> I told you, pig. I just uh, want that to trend. Jack septic guy has a huge cock. <laughs> Jack septic cock. It should be Jack septic hog. Jack septic hog. I like that. Hog. Jack ho- hogus. <laughs> <laughs> Jack hogus. <laughs> you thinking about changing your name back to Sean McLaughlin on YouTube? No. Why not? Because branding is fucking on point. SEO is developing strong. Mm-hmm. What does SEO mean? Is that kind of like... Search engine optimization. Stands for Sony Entertainment Online. <laughs> <laughs> you don't think people would be able to find you using your real name? Sean no, there's McLaughlin? other Sean McLaughlins out there. There's only one Jack guy. Thanks for tuning in, everybody. <laughs> <laughs> really glad to have Justin on. Hopefully it was actually exciting to watch. Maybe you can see why we're friends with him, or maybe we won't be friends with him anymore, depending on how the internet reacts to how he was. I don't want to even joke about that. <laughs> you opened yourself up to our communities. Mm-hmm. Now they will decide your fate. It'll Judgment like- is swift, just like Taylor. <laughs> It'll be like Survivor. Life is the long. The tribe has spoken. <laughs> right now isn't forever. Your circumstances don't define you. Things can change. They can definitely get worse. <laughs> <laughs> That's where we can end. <laughs> <laughs>